Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> We're gonna be down at Travis tonight, but I think everybody else is ready to begin. So, Bri, why don't we start with you saying hi? Hello, I'm Bri. I play Bernadette Brandt, who is uh, the best shooter in the group, although she hasn't had the opportunity to prove it so far this arc. <laughs> Hey, I'm playing Connor Leon, uh, the Grim's mechanic, and harasser of merchants. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry, last week we began the uh, part of the adventure where you're the protagonist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we get to learn what that means. Yeah. I, am, uh, I play as James. I am the, you could say the brains. Uh, yep. I'm smart. I'm stupid smart. I know my stuff. I can heal people, and um, I get emotional damage now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, reminder! You had I'm still I'm damage. still the baby. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm you got to break the baby. Still the so, baby of the group. You, the group of you, met with uh, the publisher of the Cairo Bulletin. Uh, Nigel, who told you, after some conversation, it, you got the impression that he's not just a newspaper man, he might actually be uh, employed by the British government in some fashion, but he also, uh, without himself realizing it, gave you quite a, a shock by announcing that, uh, that a picture of your father is actually a picture of Omar al-Shakti. Uh, a powerful merchant in town who you have also heard is the head of the Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh. So I am wondering where you want to proceed from there. Mm. We're going to assume that you spent the morning at the Bulletin. So you can either retreat and recover from revelations or you can strike out to new ground for the afternoon God, I can't remember what the other thing we we're going to do was so you let's see you have consulted with Warren Bezart you've been to the newspaper uh, you have heard from uh, from your merchant contract for Az Najjar that the cult is interested in artifacts held at the Mosque of Ibn Tulun. You have heard that the Clive expedition is currently in Memphis, and if you want to make inroads with them, you might be best served by looking for a member of the party that they have uh, that was fired, uh, Van Hoyland, who is an archaeologist still here in Cairo. That was one of the things we were going to do. And, of course, you could always decide to confront Al-Shakti. If he's the leader of the cult, I don't know if we want him knowing who you are. <laughs> it's like the Mickey Mouse Club, right? <laughs> no, you're not whoever this made-up character you call yourself. You're... Arthur, my father. <laughs> yeah, oh, that that wouldn't go bad. well. I would get. I'd only see bad things happening if I did that. Mm-hmm. So you could also, like, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to stifle your creativity here. You could look around the <laughs> town and find out. Uh, Anything additional you can learn about the man? I do want to uh, talk to... I'm trying to remember his name again. Uh, Dr. Ali Kafour at the museum? Mm-hmm. About... Just, like, show him the drawing of... Um, the symbol that we have. And say... Or tell him that... It's, uh... 
we found one piece, but it seems there's another piece missing. And if we're able to get it, we might be able to repair one of the pyramids. That is actually helping with uh, sealing the, the Black Pharaoh. Hmm. Well, I'm all for going to uh, visit him. Okay. See, see if, if he has any ideas. You... Yeah, if only to give you a little time to process the fact that your dad leads a cult. <laughs> At this point, I'm uh, I'm a little scared to think that it's actually no longer him. The real question is, would that be better or worse if it wasn't? Well, if it wasn't, it means that he's been dead. Mm -hmm. And if it is... It means that he's been brainwashed. Or that he's not the person you thought. That's if he tries to go and get me to join him. Then he's definitely not the person I thought. So I guess there's three outcomes here. <laughs> <laughs> eh, there's only two that are really important. Yeah. Uh, All right. So um, you can make your way over to the museum. At this point, you're kind of regular fixtures here. Uh, so as soon as you announce yourself to the receptionist, uh, Dr. Kafour will, he, he will make himself available to you. Sweet. You have the piece with the pyramid with you? Uh, no. I was actually going to leave that back at the hotel where I have it hidden. Okay. Absolutely fair. But I will tell him that I have... I'll show him the drawing of it, saying that we have one piece hidden somewhere. Mm -hmm. We just... Have you seen this symbol? There's, we went to the pyramid where it was broken off. And it seems that there was a second piece that is missing. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll say, uh, I don't, I don't. I've definitely seen this somewhere before. I'll have to do some research and see if I can dig it up. You say this is... You saw this on one of the pyramids. You, are you going to give him all the details? Like it's the Red Pyramid? And... Yeah, we'll inform him that it was... At the Red Pyramid, there was a broken piece. Uh, we found one of the pieces. Someone actually gave it to us. We right now have it hidden somewhere so it won't get stolen because we think it's actually important on trying to find both pieces and restore that part of the pyramid to be able to make sure that the, say the black pharaoh doesn't come back again or doesn't fully come back okay are you going to tell him about your own personal experience with black pharaoh I will briefly mention it, saying that we have encountered part of him. He's not fully back, but he has talked to us. And it wasn't a pleasant experience. At all. Seeing as uh, we kind of told him no. That's... Hmm. 
I don't know if I can say whether that was wise or not. Seeing as his goal was to make us stop doing what we were doing. Yes, no. I... I, I'm not, cool. I don't think that you had any good options. Um, yes, I will. I will look into this. Um, it's clearly is some sort of ward. I think you're right in that it's, it was meant to seal him. Did you have any indication of, I mean, do you know when it was broken? Um, no, but I, I do happen to know uh, approximately when it was made. Would that, would that help? He looks at you somewhat strangely. He says, I wasn't, I wasn't aware that you were trained in archaeology as well. Oh, I'm not. An uneducated guest then? Um, let's, uh, let's put it down to, um, a, a, a trick of the family. Objects. Yeah, there's a heavy there's a, history and she can see I, I, that history. He'll, he'll, there's a bit of. Like it's, he clearly doesn't know exactly what you're talking about, but he gets enough. And he says, all right. Um, and I will, uh, I'm pretty sure now I've made duplicates of this. I'm pretty sure I've given everybody at least a duplicate of the, uh, of the song. Okay, so you write down, you wrote out, you actually wrote down. Yeah, I've, the, I've wrote down like multiple copies in case if anything ever happens. And I will actually hand him one and say that uh, this, actually because she was able to learn about that history, we were actually able to find this and learn this. And I'll just hand it to him and say, from what we know, this was actually a sign of like protection. And by the way, y'all have some of the pronunciation of those words entirely incorrect. No, I, I got them correct. Remember that. <laughs> you did, but I'm telling that guy that uh, how they think those words were pronounced is wrong. <laughs> I am giving him a copy of this spell. We'll see if that comes down at any point. Uh, so, yeah, reading over it, he, he agrees with you. This is definitely... This is definitely a spell meant to uh, to protect from evil, to ward against it. Um, I think the group, like the group of you, is probably you've been able to put together that most likely this was broken during, like, by the Carlo. I, I was about to say, I'm feeling like this was. Yeah. During the Carlisle expedition, don't know when, but it would be during. Well, there's a good chance it would have been the the same night that they disappeared into the same pyramid that you did overnight. Hmm. Uh, and it may be like just putting clues together. You might you might conclude that they broke it in order to go in and talk to him. So sealing it. Now again, that that right there would have been a mistake. Sealing it again, Doctor Kafour will agree with you that that's a good goal, but uh, might be a little bit like closing the barn door after the horse is out. So, so we, we somehow get the horse we would have to first. somehow get him back in. Possibly. Um, I would say that either he 
I'm becoming more suspicious of of Mr. Carlisle myself. Um, I don't know which of these possibilities is more likely, but it seems to me that either he does not intend, the Pharaoh himself does not intend to take human form at this point in time, or possibly he already did those years ago. Well, that's a horrifying thought. Yes. I'm, I'm hoping that it's the former. <laughs> Uh, but I can't say which one is more likely. I think James uh, stiffened up hearing that a little bit. And uh, I, th I feel like I would reach for my wallet again. I'm going to pull out my wallet, and I'm going to say, uh, we did learn another thing. And I will show him the picture and say, does this man, point at my father, does this man look familiar? Um, hmm. I believe I've... I believe I've seen him in the papers. Um, is that... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't... He looks familiar, I couldn't say. Uh, Dr. Kafour, you'll recall has seen uh, rights, he's seen cultists in the desert, but he is not the one who actually like he knows that the cult exists, but he didn't know anything about Al Shakti being in charge of it. That was... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not giving him uh, that. And I'm developing a couple of questions for James in a bit. And uh, I'll just go and say, then, um, it's all right. Uh, Would you like me to look into it, see if I can identify him? No, I already know who he is. I was just wondering if he at all did. Um, he looks, he looks similar to, like, I see a family resemblance, don't I? He would. He was my father before he left for the expedition. I'm just going to reach over and put a hand on James' shoulder and like, rub his back a little bit. Now I, uh. Now I don't know what he is. man, I don't know what exactly you're going through, but if I can help you, I will. I... I don't even know myself now. You don't suppose your father had um, any ability similar to mine, would you? Not that I know of. Honestly, I didn't even know any uh, abilities existed until um, I kind of met you guys. Fair enough. Not always uh, those kind of abilities were, you know, fairy tales. Stuff that people could only dream of. 
or stuff that would only be used to give you nightmares. Honestly, the more I learn about our world, the more I realize uh, how small and how how big this this world is, and that I am I don't know anything at times. That is the beginning of wisdom. I think continuing to take action is is wise. I will look into this uh, this symbol, and I got the impression that the that this ward spell, this warding spell that you wrote down here, is connected to it somehow. So I will look into that as well. I have several books I can consult here in the in the museum. Thank you. I would, uh, I would appreciate that. And um, if you do see, if you do see um, a man that looks like my father, try, try to be careful around him. I will be. On the watch for it. Saying that as like a uh, don't seek him out, but like just if you see him, don't run, but like try to get out of there as quickly and safely as you can. Yes. Uh, something you have not availed yourselves of so far, but you might want to at some point, is as he says, the museum actually does have a large... His job is uh, curating the occult collection. Mm. So there are books here. And there are some old artifacts that you could look through sometime. Um, you run his uh, his trust. I think, frankly, we ought to do that next. I was about to say, actually, if that's available to us, I would actually like to look at some of those. Absolutely. Would you like to do the research on the symbol yourself? Or do you have something else in mind that you want to look up? I have a few things I want to look up. The symbol is important, but... There might will... be more that we might need. <clears throat> Sorry. So what... Uh, either one of you is free to look through things. Uh, obviously, James is going to have a little better idea of what he's looking at. But what do you want to try to find information about? I will specifically be assisting look up, looking up any information about that symbol and the uh, the prayer partially because I know the exact context that it was used in mm -hmm. and roughly the time period, so hopefully I can at least get us pointed in the right direction on that. Okay. I would like to take a look at these artifacts that he has and see um, if I can figure anything out about them. How about Connor? You haven't gotten to do anything this session either. Not really. Um, 
I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. That's the, that's a big thing with Connor. Well, uh, Connor, why don't you give me a luck roll? Sure. Hey. Hey. All right, then, um... If I can assume that you just kind of start poking around at the books kind of disinterestedly. Yeah. You're going to come across one that's, uh, it looks very, very old. Uh, there's not anything written on the spine, but the leather looks unusual. Uh, like you're. It catches your eye because it's. It has a sheen to it that you're not used to seeing in leather. And it's almost a little bit iridescent. Like it, uh. Kind of looks a little bit different colors depending on which angle you're looking at it. Yeah, so yeah, Connor's going to see that this book is slightly weird and ignore all warning signs and crack it open. Alright. <laughs> yeah, the... Sounds about right. So this, like... Look, he doesn't have, he doesn't have genre savvy, okay? <laughs> well, don't worry. You won't be able to uh, s suddenly learn mysteries man should not know. Because when you crack it open and you flip through a couple pages, it is in Arabic. But, uh, <sighs> after you flip through a few pages, the doctor will come rushing over to you and he says, I'm sorry, this is a very old and, and rare tome. I... I have to ask that we, that we be very careful with it. Uh, he sees that he is about he was about to start creasing a page while full flipping, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> uh, that's fine. Uh, I can't even read." So <laughs> he, he he like gestures with the book towards. Uh... Does James actually know this language? Do I know what this language is? Um, I. At this point, you've you've seen this like you've seen a similar language written on signs all over town. This yeah. looks like okay. it, it's older, but it, it looks like it's Arabic. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll like uh, kind of wave it towards James and be like, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can read this, but uh, this is this might be interesting enough. You do have a good eye. This is this is the Al Azif. Uh, there are only a few copies known to exist in the entire world. Uh, most of them in translation. Hmm. Would I actually be able to read that? Uh, I don't think you know Arabic, do you? No, I don't. No, I don't. I know only English and Egyptian. So without... Uh... Without using your uh, your issue, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to read it. But uh, at this point, any one of you, you can make either mythos or an occult roll. Uh, that includes Let's you, Connor. You, I think you have the highest mythos. Yeah, I have a higher mythos than I have a cult. So yeah, I'm gonna roll a mythos real quick. No. I'm oh, going so to do something silly, and I'm going to roll a cult, even though I only have a five in that. Ooh. Come on. Aww. Oh, I saw a one, and I was happy. Almost. Oh. Yeah. No, you're not. None of you are familiar with this. Yeah. Uh, clearly, Doctor Kafour thinks it's an old, important book, but it's not something you have any immediate connection to. 
I mean, if I grow desperate and I need to read it, I'll do it. But I'll look at it. I'll keep it in mind, and then I'll go back to looking at the artifacts, saying I can't. Just from looking at it, I can't. Uh, I can't understand it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Doctor Kafour will happily go over the uh, the artifacts that are here. There's a there. Are, a lot of them are ritual implements. Um, he'll show you the tools that were actually used for mummification. I forget what the tool, what the name of the tools were, but the ones that like hook the brain out through your nostrils and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah, the scrambler. <laughs> Technical term. <laughs> That's not the official name, folks. <laughs> That's the name in ancient Egyptian. <laughs> Uh, there are priestly artifacts here. Um, there are statues, uh, depictions of some of the different gods. Uh, he does actually have a couple of uh, a couple of pieces that he says were related to the worship of the Black Pharaoh himself. Um, I of course there's his. There aren't many of these left. There was a great deal of effort made to wipe him from history after his downfall. And uh, these are never put on public display for much of the same reason. Yeah. I will uh, still like to look at them. They might either come in handy or they might be dangerous, but we, don't, we definitely don't want to show them. So there will be... Um, Actually, it's the same, uh, the same scepters that uh, the same scepters that Gavigan had used, and which uh, mm. Theodore stole from him and subsequently <laughs> used himself. Uh, these are obviously much, much older, and it. But it looks like at one point they were much more extravagant as well. Uh -huh. As in actually coated in gold and all that. All right. Uh, apart from that, it is um, most of the stuff, most of the artifacts in the occult collection are additional uh, additional versions of things that you can see on display as well. Uh, Alright. So when there was uh, going to be something that stood out. Uh, not, not at the moment, anyway. And Birdie, you're, you wanted to work with Dr. Kafour to look up any more information on the symbol itself, correct? Yes, the symbol and the... I'll just call it a hymn. Okay. Uh, what's your library use score? Very low. <laughs> uh, 20. Okay. His is it is low. low. His is just a little bit higher at 35. Uh, a lot of his scholarly skills are quite high, but it looks like when he uses the library, he takes his time. So I'll let, <laughs> I'll let you roll the D100, and we'll see if you can beat a 35. Come on, baby. No. So, uh... I do have plenty of luck to spend. <laughs> Well, he is going to, if you don't spend the luck, you'll spend the afternoon looking with him, eliminate a good deal of the library, and he tells you, like he'll be, he'll tell you that he'll keep looking and he'll alert you as soon as he, as soon as he knows anything. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and spend the luck because apparently I have maximum luck. Okay. <laughs> so I might as well. All right. 
If you want to do that, then yeah, um... I'm, I'm gonna do that. Let's just get that out of the way. Uh, then yeah, eventually, looking through the scrolls of Papyrus, he will come across a record that actually is of the, uh, the burial and subsequent sealing of the Black Pharaoh. Uh, it will give you some additional details. He had mentioned, when he told you the story before, he mentioned that the Pharaoh, uh, Sneferu, I can't, I have no idea if that's pronounced correctly. <laughs> ordered all traces of him stricken from the land and told you about the, uh, the commissioning of the pyramids. Reading this will give you a better understanding of the configuration of the pyramids, why the bent pyramid has the shape that it does, why they're located um, relative to each other. And actually, even though they're not near the Sphinx, actually why they are not near the Sphinx. All right. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything more I can give you about the symbol itself other than knowing exactly what it looks like. Or about the hymn, because you already, like, you already have the spell. Yeah. So, uh, at this point, I think the two of you are confident that if you want to spend the time on it, because it takes a while, but if you want to spend the time on it, you could manufacture your own seal and put on top of the pyramid. I think it would pay to at least have that ready. Have that as a backup? Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, this is the sort of thing you would you would have been you would be able to put together from these stories that it took the work of lots of priests over a few weeks possibly over a few months to put enough uh, enough power into this thing to actually seal him to seal this entity and to do it for millennia mm -hmm. so uh, you could definitely make one yourselves uh, let's say With some effort, you could make one powerful enough to seal this being for a matter of days or weeks. But you're going to have to find some additional source of power or just work on the seal for a very long time in order for it to last as long as the previous one did. I mean, a few days might be all we need. Mm -hmm. All depends on what you want to do with it. I say we go ahead and make one that will last for a couple days, maybe a couple weeks, just to give us a little breathing room if we need to use it. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So if you want to do that quickly, it's going to require, instead of just costing magic points, it's going to cost POW. Okay. And you can divide that up. You can divide that cost up among whoever is working on this, uh, on this task. So would that actually permanently lower yes. our power? Okay. Don't have to make What's... a decision right now. Yeah. Let, uh, let's think about that one and come back to it. Yeah. The, yeah. 
The spell itself says investing 10 POW into the spell provides it to remain active for up to five days. Okay. Uh, you could have, if you can talk some of the others into working with you on it, you can be divided among the whole group, however you want to do it. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that one later, I think. Absolutely fair. Yeah. So I think uh, you'll have spent the afternoon researching at the museum then. Mm hmm And unless you want to do something in the middle of the night, uh, we're going to switch to tomorrow morning. What do you say? I'm game. Who's with me? Uh, give James something a little less alcoholic to help soothe his nerves. I think, um, actually, when it does turn... Do we have a kitchen at the, uh, the hotel? Uh, it's a big enough... Yeah, you... It's an expensive enough hotel, I believe you do. And at any rate, you could, um... I'm going to actually try and cook... I, I feel like I'll go to sleep early. And I will try and wake up early, and I'll try and cook up something to eat for everybody. Attempt. Try and, uh, try and get my mind off of everything. Fair enough. Is there any reason to assume you wouldn't be good at it? I'm I'm assuming that twenty you know, years old. Just, will... I mean, you're you're just cooking up a breakfast. I don't see any reason you need to worry about rolling unless you want to. Yeah. I feel like there's a chance I burn an egg or two. Yeah, but that's not consequential. You can roll if you want to, but I'm just saying you don't need to. Uh, regardless, yeah. regardless of how it spells, the spell will be uh, a nice surprise to everybody as they're coming out of their own bedrooms in the morning. And what oh. is this, might I ask? I thought I would uh, try something I haven't tried in a while. Birdie will look at the slightly burned toast. The slightly crispy eggs. Reminds me of home. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like there would be, um, I would have got some potatoes, I would have peeled them and already cut them up into like little squares, kind of trying to make like a hash brown. Probably something yeah. like, um, there's probably other stuff in there as well. Give some like vegetables. I'm thinking like, uh, bell peppers. Ooh, yeah. Nice hearty breakfast. Making me a little bit hungry. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh... will do that for everybody, and then uh, we can continue our day. I'll break out some of the local coffee that I've picked up <laughs> for everybody. I like this group together, this stuff. It's nice. It's wholesome. It makes the uh, later moments where we inevitably turn e on each other hit harder. <laughs> it's me trying to distract myself. So what are you going to do with the rest of your day? I 
guess that's where I'm uh I'm gonna look at you guys. Well, I guess my first question is what do you want to do about um I'm not gonna refer to him as your father. He's Omar for now. What what do you want to do about that one? Would you like to just go ahead and try to go for the expedition? I think, um... I think we wait on Omar. And, uh, yeah, we go for... We go and talk to ex expedition member. Want to try to find Van Hoyzen? Mm-hmm. All right. Maybe there uh, might be more information before we even think about confronting or running into uh, Omar. Okay. All right. Let's go for the uh, ex expedition member then. Uh, Doctor Kafour had mentioned to you him to you before, so if you consult with him, he can give you a, an idea where to find the man. Yeah. Yep. And your friend Ebi can, uh, when you know where you're going, he can take you there. Yeah. Sweet. So, uh, this is apparently going to be a bit of a theme for Cairo. Uh, he is actually living in the back room of a tailor's shop. Hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> now it's not the uh, it's not the same tailor shop. Good. But uh, let me just bring. This I'm, I'm kind of glad that it's not because uh, we we we've, we've we've troubled that man enough. You burned mm -hmm, that bridge, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that I'm going to just use the same map for us. Yeah. Uh, I just will assume that the red door isn't there this time. And there's not going to be any of this stuff where uh, he's paranoid and the tailor has to pretend he's not there or anything. You can go. <laughs> you go to the right address. You tell the tailor, hey, uh, we heard Van Hoyland staying here. And they'll say, oh, yes, he doesn't get many visitors. Uh, I think his money's been running low. If you're looking to hire him for anything, I would like that. And you'll be ushered to the back room, which, uh, unfortunately, once again, is this is one of the poorer sections of the city, and it's kind of a dingy room back here. Uh, <laughs> and as you, uh, as you, uh, as you head back to the little back room to talk to Van Hoyvlin, uh, the... Um, the proprietor is going to start swearing and he's going to grab a broom and chase a couple cats out the front door. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. 
so shall I take point or I'll let you take point. All right. I'll let you ask the questions. I'll just do the charming. <laughs> I'll walk back and I'll on the door. All right. Door knock, will knock. open up. There's a man standing there with a bottle of wine in his hand. Uh, acrid scent of, of drunk sweat comes out of this room. Oof. Yeah. Uh, but he will... He'll look like he's about to yell something and then he'll pause and look you up and down. And say, <laughs> Come in! Come in! <laughs> Should we come back another time? No, this is the perfect time. I'm, I'm doing the wrong accent, but I don't know if I want to try to do like a Dutch accent. So. <laughs> don't worry about it. Look, the number of times that I dropped the uh, Irish accent, my already terrible Irish accent, I get it. <laughs> uh, All right. He, yeah, he ushers you into his room. Uh, just, just kind of a, a cot, a crude table, uh, a few books on archaeology, an oil lamp, candles jammed into into used wine bottles and several additional wine bottles clearly just waiting for their candles are are any of these vintages actually decent or is this clearly cheap wine this is clearly whatever he can get his hands on uh-huh he says i i thought I thought you were that old tailor come to make me do some other chore for him. I'm glad to get some visitors. You just invite us in. You don't even know who we are. That's awful accommodating of you. Well, any time a beautiful lady comes knocking on my door. That's a oh, good day yeah. for me, I think. Well, unfortunately, this beautiful lady has a few, uh, probably ugly questions for you, if you're willing to listen. I do have, uh, some rather vintage here in exchange, if you would be willing. Mm hmm All right. What do you have? We can get a real party and, uh, started. And I'm going to offer him my flask that I have just been consistently refilling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll take a little nip of it, and his eyes will go wide. And he says, oh, see, I knew when you were at my door, this is a classy lady. So would you be willing to answer a few questions for us? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Wonderful. Are you looking for a guide? I can show... I understand I look a little down on my uh, on my luck here, but I am a trained archaeologist. I can show you around all the sites of Egypt. Tell you about the pharaohs and the queens and the mummies, the spooky stories, the, uh, the educational stories, whatever your heart desires. Well, I think we're interested in a little bit of everything, but specifically, what do you know about the Carlisle expedition and the expedition currently out in Memphis? Carlisle. Ooh. That was that one a few years ago, right? It was, yes. Yeah, that, that rich guy. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't involved in that one. Didn't they die or something? Well, that's kind of what we're trying to figure out. But the Clive expedition, oh, yes, I, yes, that, uh, he's a great man, you know. 
Oh? Oh, yes. They're, um... I mean, he fired me and everything. I thought... But I, I try not to hold a grudge. They're doing, a, they're doing important work. They found that, uh... They found that, uh... They found that Queen Natakris, you know. Yes, and then I heard she walked off. I don't know about walked off. That's a, it's a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Disappeared. Yeah, somebody walked is, off. Uh, is a better word. Yeah, it was, uh... It was a nighttime. Uh... Let me see. Now, can I, uh... You mind if I wet my whistle a bit? Refresh my memory here? Oh, please. Go ahead. So, he takes a... Maybe a little bigger sip than you had intended him to get. But, uh... Then, uh... Once he's wet his whistle, he goes on with. There was um. The uh, the temple the the pyramid of uh, what is it? Mycerinus, pyramid of Mycerinus, the the smallest. James, he, you know this, but he says the smallest of the pyramids of Giza. They found a secret uh -huh. room in there. Uh, he, by the way, does not know that there's an archaeologist in the room with him. You can bring that up if you want to. Oh, I want to hear him give the layman's terms first. I, I, I want to hear him continue. I want to see how much he knows. Okay. And so, if I feel right, I'll go and uh, jump in and say something. So here's the, here's the thing. There were no... There were no texts. There, was, there were no hieroglyphs on the walls. Usually you get... The story of the ruler or whoever is buried there. Uh, there was nothing like that in there. But the, f the trappings, the, the golden sarcophagus, the, it was there was so much wealth in there that it was very clear this was a great ruler. And, uh, well, it's... There were scrolls still in good shape in there. Uh, I did not get to read them myself. But I, I was pretty sure, pretty sure from the excitement around the camp, from the stories Dr. Clive was telling, pretty sure they confirmed who, exactly who that was. Hmm. Do you know who it was? Yes, the Natakris, the, the the great queen, the one I'm sure you've heard the story uh, Herodotus told about um, about her husband being murdered by uh, by some of his priests and people who were jealous of his being the king, and then the feast she threw for them. James, you definitely uh, know this story. Yep, and I'll, I'll help him with some of it if he's having yeah. troubles. So the the story is that she held a great feast for the people who had murdered her husband, uh, but turns out that the food's poisoned. And uh, so she killed everybody who had betrayed her, and then at the end of the dinner she killed herself because she didn't want any of their relatives to be able to get revenge against her. Uh. Uh, now you know that this is a story from Herodotus and is extremely suspect as in probably not actually true of Natakris herself in fact you know that some recently uh, recent scholarly work has suggested that the name Natakris is probably a corruption of another queen who existed around the same period mm. but he tells this story as though it's confirmed historical fact and he thinks that these uh, that the scrolls buried with the mummy confirmed it. Interesting. Yeah. But we were making we were making arrangements with the government so that we could 
remove the mummy from its final resting place, respectfully, of course. Of and, course. And within the, the law. But uh, three nights after the discovery, uh, he pauses. He looks a little distracted for a moment. And then he grabs a spoon off of the table. And he turns to the door when he flings it as hard as he can. And you see a black cat jump and run out of the room. <laughs> it's these damn cats. Anyway, we, um... We, uh, we, I, I, I kind of, I woke up in the middle of the night where there was some screaming coming from the pyramid. And, uh, when we all made our way over there, the two guards, there were two guards, there were policemen stationed outside the pyramid, just gone. And we went inside the mummy, the sarcophagus, everything, just gone. Huh. This thing weighed tons, you understand. Was there anything strange about the chamber? Yeah, the sarcophagus was gone. I mean, I mean, aside from that. Well, is it, it was... possible there was some kind of trap door or something? Something well, that got triggered to keep uh, any grave stuff? robbers. Like someone dragged it out at all? There weren't. So there were, there's obviously a lot of dust on the floor because the pyramid's been there a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were all the footprints from us going in and out. But the roller marks that you might get if somebody was pushing that thing out of there, they were using wood to roll it on or anything, nothing. There's no sign of scuffing on the stones, the dust... Didn't show any signs of having been swept clean like that. Interesting. There's no... It's not level the whole way out. And... You wouldn't need winches. But at any of the locations, like uh, at the top of the inclines and everything, no indication that winches had been attached to anything. So it just disappeared. Just interesting. Disappeared. What did they do after that? After they found it gone? Uh, well, I got fired. I had nothing to do with it. But did they I at guess... all give you a reason why you were fired? I think it's because after they lost a lot of prestige. I think they probably lost some funding. After uh, a misstep like that. And also, they moved on then. They moved on down to Memphis. So I feel like... Do you know what they were after? Down to Memphis? Uh, mm -hmm. no. I'm not sure what they're digging for now. But, I'd love to help. You know, I'm a, I'm a good guide, but I'm a better archaeologist. <laughs> I'll, uh, pipe up and say that makes the two of us. <clears throat> I, are you all right? I'm just, I'm just gonna ask, just seeing his mannerisms, seeing how absolutely hammered he is, everything, I'm just... Are, are, are you alright? Oh, of course, yeah, I'm doing great. You seem a... You, you seem a little, um... Distracted. Uh, you're being perceptive here. Uh, I'm not gonna make you roll to see this. <laughs> but he says, oh, I'm doing great. No, he's... He's, he's upset. He's not doing well. He's... Man, man is drinking himself into a stupor. He is not okay. So if you press, he'll say, yeah, I've been... You know, it, it's been a little while. 
after they fired me from Dr. Clive's expedition, I haven't really been able to get work in my preferred field. I'm kind of reduced to running errands for, the, you know, the tailor, and that doesn't pay that well. It mostly goes into my rent. Do you think you got blacklisted, or is it just that difficult to find work for archaeologists out here? That doesn't seem likely. No, I don't know. I don't know. I... I... I was never that popular around here. I'm a Dutchman in Egypt. There aren't that many of us here. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks ago, I thought... thought I found something to get me back. You know, to impress Dr. Clive, get, get me back with, uh, with his expedition. Uh, Martin... Martin Winfield came to me and he told me that, uh, he heard about something, uh, a little temple in the old city, that uh, maybe I could find something worth studying in, and you know, impress Clive and get get myself hired back on. But uh, well, I don't know. I've, I've made I've, I've I've followed his directions. I went into the old city. I went down all the little alleyways he told me about, and I found a, uh, I found this weird place. I found this dark chamber, kind of underneath a building, underneath the streets. And there was, uh, there was a fire. So it's not an abandoned temple. There's a fire in the brazier. Brazier, what, how do you say that? Uh, there, was a, there, there was a fire there, and I like how you both answered. Them. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a statue of a of a, a woman with a cat's head. Would uh, I know of this at all? Well, you would know for sure that he's most likely talking about a statue of Bast. Uh, okay. And I, I looked around the room. I was pretty much going to give it up as a, as a loss, and then uh, I found a little hidden drawer in there, like uh, underneath the statue. It had some really old scrolls. I took them. You know, found old you artifacts. You wouldn't the still happen to have those, would you? I do. Could we look at them? Do you mind if I look at that? And I'm just going to oh. glance around and see if there are still cats in here. Oh, yeah. There, another cat is sneaking <laughs> into the room. Uh, and when he, like, he follows your gaze and he sees the cat, and he looks around, he grabs a bottle, flings it at the cat, and the cat dashes out of the room. <laughs> He says, yeah, you see, did ever since that, these damn cats have been all around, around all the time. I'm going to crouch down and offer my fingers out to see if I can get the cat to come in closer. Uh, okay, when you... So the cat that he threw the bottle at ran out of the room. But when you go and open up the door and... Like, look out the courtyard here. There's cats, like, there's like five of them <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, just so many cats. And you can hear uh... the shopkeeper swearing again. <laughs> I'm just gonna see if I can get one to come in close and see if it'll let me pick it up. Uh, it will when you piss, piss at it. It will come over close, but if you reach for it, it backs up. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm not going to do anything. 
Uh, I don't think animal handling is on here. It's not. But, uh, we can go with a charm. Okay. Hey. You, uh, you do as you say. The cat approaches, and it doesn't let you pick it up, but it does jump up and, like, curl around your neck. <laughs> All right. And I'll just start scratching it behind the ears and stand back up. It'll lean into that. Just, I have a cat now. <laughs> And when you head back in, he says, Oh, watch out for those things! And he shows you on his arm a few, like, They've been scratching me, they've been biting me. Oh, well, this one seems like a little sweetheart. Well, just keep I it say, on. just... <laughs> just keep it on the other side scratching of the his chin. <laughs> I will, uh, ask... I, I won't keep them, but can I go and take a look at them? The, uh, the scrolls. Are you going to, uh, are you going to be able to, like, to read them? Like, do you know anything about hieroglyphics? I know a thing or two. All right. Well, I've been working on this for a few weeks now. I've got some of it translated, but he goes over, pulls out from under the bed a, a leather satchel. And he pulls a couple scrolls out from it. And he unrolls one. And he says, so what I've been able to make out so far, these are, there's uh, they're written by a priest of Bast during the 13th dynasty. It's uh, a, a guy named Luve Karaf. Alright. Uh, in fact, it's called, well, I'm, I'm titling it, The Black Rites of Luve Karaf. Dramatic. Yeah, he waits for the... Uh, he says, I, I know, right? I think this is really going <laughs> to impress Clive. I will, um... I'll listen, and I'll nod my head, but I'm mostly going to start looking and focusing and trying to read it. Absolutely. I am in the background going to lean over to Connor and say, I think we might need to return these. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just going to meaningfully look at the cat on my shoulder. <laughs> cat headed god. So. <laughs> He'll say, I've, I've translated about half of them. And he pulls out, he reaches under the bed again, and he pulls out a sheaf of grubby papers with his uh, writing all over them. He says, can you read Dutch? That's I, I cannot. Know I cannot, <laughs> okay. but I know, I know Egyptian. Okay, well, my translation isn't going to be much use to you then. Uh, I'd like to go and actually start reading the old scrolls. Go ahead and make your hieroglyph your Egyptian roll. So they're, I mean, they really are mostly about the worship of Bast. Uh, there's some sections on Sebek. Uh, you know, one of the one of the evil serpents that tried to stop the boat of the sun god Ra from rising every morning. There's some stuff in here about how to contact the god and how to uh, how to make cats and crocodiles do what you want. <laughs> I mean, I've almost been desperate enough to try that myself. I can't, I can't tell you how much I've been kept up at night by these damn cats. I like to uh, try and push the roll and use my insane language. 
Okay. Go we'll try and read it because apparently I failed. Yeah, he's. I mean, there's a drunk guy rambling at you the whole time that you're trying to read it, so it's not. It's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> rambling and threatening the cat. What's the roll again for that? There. Uh, so you would just roll the same thing, or you same can, thing just. You can click on the spider, and there's a push button. Right. Ah. Oh. Okay. Me... Well, there goes James. <laughs> Hold on. Nah, uh, so, using your insane language skill, your your skill in the language is seventy five percent, so it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. I was about to say it would it would pass. <laughs> so, uh, as he's giving you this running commentary, uh, as you're reading, you're going to find that. Um, He's kind of not doing a great job. Uh, there are several points where you can you can either correct him or you can just to yourself no, uh, he's wrong about this. Uh, like he got the name of the serpent wrong. I uh, I'll mention bits and pieces. I'll kind of like kind of hover my finger over it and. Say the like mumble the name mm -hmm. a little loud enough that he can hear it, and then just kind of go back to being quiet, continue, and then mumble again wherever he's wrong. Okay, uh, so this is gonna take a few hours for you to read the whole thing. Uh, this is going to count as an initial reading of a tome, you're going to gain okay. one mythos point and lose one sanity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think James you're going to have to roll a charm for me here to see a charm to see whether he's like oh it's a translation buddy he's helping me out or if he's like this damn kid keeps contradicting me <laughs> Well, oh man, let's hope I can get uh, below a 15. <laughs> I mean, does it matter to you, really? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> so, at the end of this, he's going he's gonna to be thoroughly irritated. Not with Bry. <laughs> Or not with Bernie, but with James. He's gonna roll the scroll up and say, "Kid, you gotta go back to school. You gotta finish your degree or something. You just you're getting all these finer points wrong. You got a good basic grasp. Don't get me wrong, but you you know, there's a lot more to it than what you learned in like hieroglyphs 101." <laughs> Damn. He's not a like, he's not a particularly nice guy. No. I'll, uh, I'll say, I'll, I'll try to ease him by saying I still have much to learn. Okay. Yeah, that'll that'll mollify him a bit. Without actually saying that he's wrong. Well, um, I think we'd love to come back sometime and read a little bit more if that's all right. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome anytime, lady. I'll, and like I said, I'm I'm a good tour guide. I absolutely believe you. I might have you show me around a little bit tomorrow. If you're amenable. Yeah, that'd be swell. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, thank you. I'll have a... Uh... 
I- I'll have a friend of mine get in touch, all right? Uh, yeah, uh, sure, you can just come by. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> uh, he, he bows, takes his hat off to you and everything, but it's pretty clumsy. <laughs> Uh, you head out to the shop and the shopkeeper is chasing away another cat. Do I still have the one on my shoulders? Uh, if you want to. Yeah, I'll, I'll have just kept the cat on my shoulders. As soon as we're out of earshot of the guy, though. Alright, so I'm gonna distract him and you two get those scrolls tomorrow. How's that sound? <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> He, um, as you can probably tell, he's, uh, not correct on a good chunk of it. And, uh, forgive me for being a bit paranoid, but the coincidence of all of these furry little friends hanging out. Our cats? (laughs) I think we might have, uh, a little something going on there. And I'd like to know exactly what. As you get out onto the street, the cat is going to jump down off of your shoulder and dash off into the crowd. Uh, Fair enough. Can one of you make a spot hidden roll for me? Probably going to be birdie. Yeah, me, 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 me. I could could try. I got a good spot hidden. Yeah, all of you can try. We'll just see who sees what what there is to see here. I'm probably not beating that. Well, we'll see. But go ahead for it. Yeah. Oh. Connor, you don't see shit. You follow. You walk out the doorway. You follow your face. I'm just blinded by the light. Walking out. Kid, kid runs past. Pocket sand. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> Bernie and James, you're both going to see the cat runs off through the crowd to the other side of the street uh, and jumps up onto somebody else's shoulders. And for just a moment, you're going to see an absolutely stunning young woman in her early 20s. Absolutely gorgeous woman with black hair, a fairly lithe body, staring directly at the two of you. And then as some more of the crowd passes down the street, you look for her again and she's gone. I'm just gonna glance at the other two to see if they saw that. Uh, Connor's picking dust out of his eyes. Well, I think we have our answer. Alright. Uh, I think that's where we'll leave it for tonight. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Now we get to decide if uh, Bast is who she says she is, and if we want to help her. <laughs> Do we want to piss off another god, guys? Probably not the best idea. Honestly, honestly, Bast is Isn't like it? the only elder god you should ever want to be in the good graces of. <laughs> If I remember correctly. Uh, I don't know. How was Cthulhu? It, <laughs> uh, if you ever it meet him, we'll find out. Yeah, I don't remember much about Cthulhu. I, I just know he's the religious <sighs> one. Like, the, like he is actively religious. That's it. That's all I remember uh, about Cthulhu. Cthulhu himself is a priest. Yeah. God. <laughs> Wait... Yeah, Cthulhu's not a god. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's... Huh. Yeah, he's just a priest. Interesting. Lovecraft was weird. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah Cthulhu and Cthulhu are worshippers. Bast is a god. Yellow Prince is a god. Who you should never trust. Never trust the Yellow Prince. Yeah. Actually, you know, trust him, trust him for the bit. Uh, <laughs> Joey, no. Joey, yes. 
<laughs> Joey, no. Uh, see, I think I know who you're talking about just because of um of the game. Yeah. That I highly recommend over. reading The King in Yellow. Yes. If you haven't. It's a weird book. The Repairer of Reputations is very upsetting. <laughs> Uh, what was uh Yogsoth? Yogsothoth? Yeah, Yogsoth the god. Yog is also Sothoth. yeah, yeah. That guy is not yeah, I... to be not a not a good god. You don't want to. You don't want to. Well, you guys know all. You don't want to the... deal with them. Here's me. I just don't know. I mean, I just know Cthulhu, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's Cthulhu. Uh, <laughs> you know, don't worry. This is nerdery. You don't need <laughs> to get into. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is this is this is the kind of nerd shit you do not need to focus in on. Yeah, yeah I don't need to go paranoid. It's all right. I'm good. I like my sanity. And also, and, uh... and also, it's better to play a Cthulhu game not knowing anything. <laughs> not about knowing, the odds. yeah, no, it's fun. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, you learn will... as it uh as it happens. Yeah. So I will I throw it's... it out there for the audience that here's a, a fun Egyptology fact. Uh, Bastet, in some cases, is considered to be the same goddess as Sekhmet. And in some cases, depending on who's telling the story, they are completely separate goddesses. Uh, Bastet <laughs> is generally seen as the quote-unquote kinder one where Sekhmet uh, was literally created by Ra to seek out and destroy darkness in the hearts of men and went on such a rampage that they had to get her drunk to to stop her from annihilating humanity. Hmm. So maybe that's the god Van Hoeven's really serving. Yeah. <laughs> You, you can't have you can't have her girl boss too hard, you know. Apparently. Anything to say before we say goodnight, folks? Nah, we're good. Uh, huh? Emotional damage. See you back here <laughs> next week.